This is Shy from Shy Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how to pre bake a cube map reflection into a texture directly. And this works for all textures, including models. And you can see the effect here, and I'll even disable the environment mask so you can see how everything is mostly perfectly lined up. So there's many situations where you'd want to do this over using normal cube maps, but for my case, using cube maps would result in like pretty obvious seams all over the place. So, and over here you can see how the reflections no longer align with the sky in a realistic way, and so that's what I'm going to be fixing in this video. So what we need to do is go and generate a VTF that contains a cube map, and you can do this two ways. The easiest way to do it is to create a map with only a single ENV cube map entity, and you place that where you want the cube map to generate from. Then you run the map and build your cube maps, and then you can use a program like VIDE or PackRat to extract the cube map VTF files from the BSP. So that's super easy, but there's some downsides. You don't have as much control, and there's some things that don't render in-game when it takes its cube map screenshots. If you do it this way, skip to insert time here in the video to find out what to do after you have a VTF cube map. Now I prefer doing it the harder way, which is going to require the Gmod cube map screenshot tool, which is linked in the description along with all the other info you might need. So first go and place yourself at the location you wish to generate your cube map from. Then you can open up console and type cl underscore show pos1 to bring your location and angles to the top corner of the screen. Now turn around and point your camera directly south or negative 90 on the y axis. Get it as close as you can to negative 90 and 0 on all the other axes, but it really doesn't have to be perfect. As long as you're pointing generally south, the cube maps will be lined up correctly in the final texture. Now you just take the screenshot. Now open up your Gmod folder, and in the data folder, there should be another folder called cube maps, and inside that will be another folder with the cube map picture you just took. Sometimes the Gmod cube map screenshot add-on just breaks and doesn't work, so just relaunch the game if that happens. You're also going to need to open up a material source folder. I'm using episode 2's in this video, but you can use any mod, including Gmod, that comes with VTEX. Inside this folder, I'm going to use another folder called test to make it easier to find my final texture, but this isn't needed. So before we can convert these into a cube map, we have to go through and convert them to targas. I use XN convert because it's super fast, but you can use any program that supports TGA output. Now move those targas into your material source folder from earlier. So inside this test folder, you need to create a blank text file and give it a name. This is what our cube map screenshots will be prefixed with. I'm going to call it temp name. Now I'm going to go through and name all of the files correctly. Back will become temp name BK, down will become temp name DN, front will become temp name FT, and up will become temp name up. But with left and right, we're going to swap those around. So Left becomes temp name RT, and right becomes temp name LF. Now open up some kind of image editing tool, I'm using Photoshop, drag in your up screenshot, rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise, then save it. Now open up your down screenshot and do the exact same thing. The coolest thing about this method is you can manually modify your cube maps with an image editor. For example, I want the reflection here to not include the Hogwarts castle, so I'm just going to brush out the entire castle from the image. Yeah, that's good enough. You can go crazy with this and edit in like Easter eggs, like write shy on the wall or something. So then you save it. So now you open up your mods bin folder and you locate vtex.exe, and all you have to do is drag your text file onto vtex.exe. You'll see a command prompt pop up, and once that finishes, now in your normal materials folder, inside the test subfolder I place the original files in, you'll find temp name VTF. So open that up, and in the corner of VTF edit, you'll see a box that says face. Click this until you get to the last one and ensure that everything looks good cube map wise. Now you need to go and take this texture and put it somewhere where you can actually use it, which in my case is my detail folder, and give it a name that makes sense. For me, it's HGS Street Alt. Now you have to make a unique variant of the texture that you want to apply this cube map to. So for me it's really easy because I can just make an exact copy of the already existing VMT that I have. All I have to do is modify the ENV map parameter to point to the texture I just created, HGS Street Alt. 
Now in Hammer, you would go and apply the texture, but it's not going to be perfect in some spots, but it's really not a big deal if you have a few visible reflection seams. And so now in game, you can see that the two streets have their own reflections that actually make sense. There is a little bit of a seam here, but it's not really that bad. And so that's it. And this is Hogsmeade, which you will hopefully be able to play on soon, exclusively on Star by Star Gaming's Hogwarts Roleplay server. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on cool, epic videos about, like, uh, Gary's mod. Uh... <laughs>